He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample under foot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation.
could sit down, church. kung bakit, pero for some reason napataas yung pag ko ng YouTube recently. Wala lang. Ayun ko, for some reason. I, I know I wrote somewhere dito po sa notebook ko noon na uh, titigilan ko na po yung pag ko ng YouTube para pampantok ko. Pero it seems like lately, I've been dumarami po yung mga videos na gusto kong panoorin for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, gusto ko lang pong i-share ngayon. Uh, pagdating, nga, uh, pagdating po pala, pagdating sa investing, ano ho, uh, when we talk about the word investing, we're not just, hindi lang pala, hindi pala, hindi lang pala pera yung pinag-uusapan natin pagdating sa investment, ano ho. Kasi, anyone who doesn't have money can also invest. Dalawa lang naman po yung choice dun eh. It's either you invest with your money, or you invest with your time. Tinan mo, alam na ni Mama Josie. And, um, ito lang naman. We can, we can, we can go ahead and put in all of our resources into something and then expect it to grow. Or we can put all of our time into something and expect it to grow din po. Pero there's no guarantee that, lagi na, lagi na lang nilang sinasabi yun eh. Lalo na dito sa mga YouTube channels kasi ayaw nilang mabash. Unang-una nilang sasabihin, bago nila sasabihin sa inyo yung mga strategy nila or whatever, sasabihin nila sa inyo, I'm not a financial advisor and uh, you do what you want. Basically, ganun yung point nila, hindi po ba? Pero yun po yung isang sinasabi nila, you invest with your time and or your money. I have an investment. We're talking about that investment right here. It's because Jesus Christ not just invested money into us, but invested everything into us. Ano po? All right? Let's take note of that. Some of us, ano yung lagi nating sinasabi pagdating sa investment? Only invest with money that you are willing to lose. Ano ho? Pero this is Jesus Christ. He didn't just invest with something that He was willing to lose, but He lost everything. He was willing to lose everything. Down to His life. Down to the clothes na pinagsugal po nila. And down po doon sa buhay nila mis- niya, niya mismo. All right? So with that sobering thought, ano ho, let's just remember that Jesus Christ invested not just some of Himself, but everything. The greatest of value. Ano po. And we thank you, Jesus, for that. Sa lahat, mga, sa lahat po ng mga pinagdadaanan natin ngayon, sa lahat po ng mga nararamdaman po natin ngayon, sa lahat po ng mga nakikita natin ngayon, marami pong salamat, Panginoon, na kayang-kaya po nating alahanin na you have been through it all because you gave all. We celebrate that freedom today in Jesus' name. Amen. Kain po tayo. Ano yung isang sinabi ko? Ano yung sabi? Bastos eh, no? Kumaka- nagsasalita habang kumakain. <laughs> Tawag dito. Hindi lang, po, hindi lang po pera yung pwede natin i-invest, kundi time na rin ho. And certainly, Jesus Christ did not just invest some of His time, pero all time in existence. The Creator of time invested not only a season, not only a century, not only a millennia, not only generation after generation, kundi ho. He, ju- he committed Himself to being with us all time. So in other words, nag-invest po siya, hindi lang po for a couple of years, Meron po akong mga ibang investments na parang I have to pay for a certain amount of time. I mean, I have to pay a certain amount of time after a certain amount of time. Tapos, bahala na. Uh, tignan na lang natin kung lalaki yung investment na yan o hindi. Pero, dito po kay Jesus, He was not only willing to invest everything, but He invested everything forever. Isn't that wonderful? 
that uh, when he shed his blood, it wasn't just to go ahead and say, but it's, yeah, it's nice for us to think, yes, my sins are forgiven. But it's another thing entirely for us to go ahead and say that our sins are forgiven for all time. Maganda po yung sinabi ni Pastor Maven nung uh, isang training namin. Ang sinabi po niya is, imagine niyo naman, you put yourselves in the shoes of Jesus. Na parang, how does it feel for you to spend your days in this limited lifetime with 12 people na day in and day out, kasama, kasama mo sila? Magsasawa ka ba sa kanila? Na, do, ganun yung mga nainisip ko nun eh. But obviously and apparently, Jesus was not going to go anywhere near getting bored with us. Kung tayo mismo nagsasawa na tayo sa mga kasama natin, could you imagine the creator of the universe? Na mahal na mahal tayo that much na parang kahit na araw-araw niya tayo makita, hindi siya magsasawa. That's how committed and that's how much invested the Lord Jesus Christ is for us. So why don't we go ahead and give some time for that? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for that commitment. Thank you, Jesus, that you committed forever for all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Ah. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> I pulled it off, didn't I? Um, yeah, to the multitudes and the thousands that are attending in our physical service, I want to say hello to you guys. So, of course, you're all socially distanced, and I appreciate that, wearing your masks and all that. And, all, and to the tenth, tens of thousands of you guys watching online, thank you. You are here. And uh, pat yourself in the back if you can. God bless you. We're so thankful and we're so, um, we're so excited. Ano po? Kasi we're starting something new. Kasi I've, I've, to be honest with you, I've grown sick of us talking about talent for the past how many weeks. And it's nice for us to go ahead and talk about something else now for a change. But something else, this something else that we are talking about we're shifting from the word talent. Now we are talking about the word legacy. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Anyway, now the thing is, before uh, before ako nag uh, before ako pumunta dito sa afternoon service po natin. Kanino pong umaga, I was in another service ano po. And uh, this was not any of our services, hindi po sa Eagles, hindi po sa Ohana, although I want, would have wanted to be there. Uh, I was in a service to uh, siguro celebrate ang buhay ng isang church member namin uh, bago siya, bago kinum, kinumit yung abo niya. So, to, to take it home, ganun. I'm talking about our good brother, Ibet. His real name is Hilario, but I have no clue why he is called Ibet. But anyway, I, here's the thing. For everything that he has done, nung tinawag po kasi ako sa harap kagabi, bigla akong, ganun talaga yung style ni Pastor Ronnie. And by the way, Pastor Ronnie, if you're listening, God bless you. Ganun yung style ni Pastor Ronnie na parang biglaan na lang na, oh, oh, I'm coming, I mean, I'm coming into the front and uh, oh, suddenly I'm talking. Yay! Ganun siya, ganun, magaling si Pastor Ronnie dun sa surprise Surprise speak, surprise prayer, surprise lead the, lead the worship and all that. And last night, he surprised, asked me, could you go ahead and talk to us about something about Brother Ibet? The late Brother Ibet. Simple lang po yung sinabi ko sa, sa, sa mga tao doon kagabi. Ang sinabi ko lang po, alam mo, if there's one thing na hindi ko makakalimutan kay Brother Ibet, yung tawan niya, yung laughter niya. Maganda po yung, I mean, we've been learning dito po sa mga, we've been learning so much over the last week. Ano ho, we've been learning a lot about mission casting. We've been learning a lot about interactive adult learning. Tapos yung isa pong napulot namin doon is, if you, if you make people laugh, you will make them listen. And certainly, ito pong si Brother Ibet, magaling siya doon eh. He first makes you laugh. 
And then right after that, no matter what he says right after that, makikinig ka because, my gosh, he's the one laughing. You know? His laughter is such a great catalyst to bring people together. Alam mo yun? And like, like we've been talking about, mal- magiging malaking loss po siya dito po sa men's fellowship natin, being led by Pastor Ronnie. And that was, in a sense, yan po yung masasabi ko na parang sa paningin ko, yan po yung isang legacy niya. He has a legacy of laughter. Manong Ibet has a legacy of laughter. Every time, because I mean like, whenever you go ahead and say, oh, what do you remember when you go ahead and mention the name of Brother Ibet? <laughs> Laging ganun ka agad eh. Sabi ko nga, if I could go ahead and make that a ringtone, sana pwede sana for a couple of months. And then people will get sick of it. But that's the thing about legacy, you know. People, we, we like to go ahead and think, hey guys, are you guys with me so far? Hello? I'm all over the place here again, so you can bear, I hope you guys can bear with me. Pag-usapan lang po natin ng konti itong legacy na to. The way I understand it, when it comes to legacy, this is how we will be remembered when we are not around. Ano ho? Legacy, yeah? So, when it comes to like, say for example, the legacy of Brother Ibet is what we would remember about him when he's gone. And what did I remember? Ang legacy niya sa akin is his laughter. Okay? Now, let me go ahead and talk about so many other things. Ano po? There are many other legacies that we see all around us. Dito po sa Pinas. Ano ho? Kenon Road. Legacy of our uh, founding fathers dito po sa Baguio City. Kenon Road itself was named after some dude named Kenon who, who, uh, who started off these roads. And, you know, every, from Camp 1, from my understanding, all you, all you older people who know about the history of Baguio can correct me about this, pero kaya natin tinatawag na Camp 1 hanggang Camp 7 and Camp 8 is because that's where they camped while they were building Kenon Road. Ewan ko, baka mamaya bolex lang tong sinasabi ko. Pero yeah, that's the legacy na dumating sa akin. Burnham Park, John Hay, Wright Park, all of these things, all of these places were named as a legacy of the people who founded Baguio? Well, I won't say founded Baguio, but you know, created the idea of Baguio and put it into place. I know. And then we talk about so many other things, like so many other, so many other legacies. We see so many legacies all around us. But I'd like us to go ahead and point out. I, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and point something out really quick here. Because um, I went to. Your most, I went to your most reliable source of information on the internet, Wikipedia. And uh, let me just go ahead and shout out a couple of things here. Ano po? 3,015 years from now, a camera placed at the ASU Art Museum in 2015 will finish its 1,000-year-long exposure in the city of Temp. Arizona. Let's go on. And we talk about so many things. I mean, how many, how many other people, I mean, how many of you here have heard about a time capsule? Do you guys know what a time capsule is? Ginawa nyo ba yun nung elementary kayo or something in the hopes that you would put stuff in a supposedly uh, matibay na container, lalagay mo yung mga ibang memorabilia doon of what was happening at that day and age and you're supposed to bury it somewhere safe and then somewhere in the future, some people will go ahead and open up said capsule and say, ah, ganito pala yung mga pinaggagawa nila. This was what was called Gangnam Style back in the day. This was what, I mean, people were into TikTok back in 2021 and so on and so forth. People will find out about that supposedly because of the time capsules that you guys plant. Ni po ba? Alright? So there are, a lot of, there are a lot of these time capsules just placed all around. And, you know, in a sense, those are some of our legacies that we have. Right? But some people took it a bit further. Kasi ano pong ginawa nila? Dito po, let me talk about the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. What, what these people did is, instead of putting yung mga memorabilia sa isa pong time capsule, they literally dug into the earth and created a vault deep inside the earth and put inside this vault panay mga seeds po. Seeds of all sorts of var- 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 varieties, all sorts of vegetables, all sorts of fruits, 
all sorts of plants. They put it in this vault. Just so that, like, say for example, magkaroon ng what? Zombie apocalypse, nuclear war, super mega typhoon earthquake combined into one. If, there any, if there's anything like that that ever came into existence, then we can go to this Valbard seed vault and start recreating, cre I mean, re recreating all, all the plants and all the animals by just planting those seeds again. Okay? But, guess what? It only lasts, it will only last for 10,000 years. So if like, for example, you know, the Lord doesn't come back for like more than 10,000 years, mag expire po lahat ng mga seeds doon. Alright? So this legacy, though we can go ahead and see it now na parang, wow, it's gonna last for 10,000 years. Let's go to 10,000 years later, pasira na siya. What am I trying to point out here? Let me go ahead and just read a couple of other things here. After 7.2 million years, how many of you here have heard of Mount Rushmore? Mount Rushmore is a mountain in the United States that was actually a plateau of sorts. Tapos ang ginawa po nila was they carved, yung parang ginawa po nila para kay Marcos, dito po sa Marcos Highway. In Mount Rushmore, they went ahead and carved out the faces of the four, I don't know, founding presidents or something like that. They, put, they, they carved out the faces of four human faces on the face of a rock. So after what this is saying is that after 7.2 million years, mawawala po yun, mag erase po yung mga mukhang yan. All right? So we could go ahead and sit down here and say, na parang, hey, yeah, no, it's fine. It's, we're going to last. Well, I'll be far, I'll be, I'll be dead by then uh, uh, after 7. Point, I mean, I'm not going to live 7.2 years to go ahead and enjoy Mount Rushmore or to see it decay. Pero ito po yung point ko. All these people who had these really good ideas of the seeds, of the mountains, of the carvings of the mountains, of Kenon Road, of Birmingham Park, all these brilliant ideas, given enough time and given without any interruption, mawawala din po sila, sila, sila. It's all gonna go away. All these legacies that we started have an end. Are you guys with me so far? We have our own legacies. We have our own ideas of legacies. But the thing about it is, the legacies that we plan on keeping and staying for a stretch of time, eventually, mat matatapos po yung mga legacy natin po na yan. Hello? Guys, are you with me so far? But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let, us, let me go ahead and pull up the Gospel of John, starting at chapter 8. Verses 48 to 59. Babasahin ko na lang po para sa ating lahat. And this is Jesus talking to the Jews. Ano po? The Jews answered Jesus. Let me read. Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and you have a demon? Ayun, sinaslander na nila si Jesus. Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my Father and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory there is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, now we know that you have a demon. Now we know you have a demon. Because Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death? What are you talking about? Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? And the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Napikon po sila. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. 
Friends, this is my point. Any legacy that we try to create on our own, any legacy that we try to create by ourselves, the mere fact that we have a start and we have an end implies that any legacy that we try to create, whether we are with other people or on our own, any legacy that we build, because it has a beginning, it has an end. What's my point here? Jesus Christ, before Abraham ever even came to existence, before the waters and before the, before the depths of the oceans were, um, were, were, were around and before creation ever, ever, ever even manifested, my friends, before that, the Holy Spirit was dwelling among the depths. And before the creation of anything and everything, Jesus Christ was already existing. Now we know for a fact that Jesus Christ does not have an end because he does not have a beginning. Before we ever even came to existence, Jesus Christ was, is, and will be. So if, here's my point, linking this to legacy, if there is anyone who has a legacy, or if there's anyone we want to go ahead and understand whose legacy no less than the Lord Jesus Christ. We build our legacies even though they fail. We build our legacies even though they fall. We build our legacies even though they would die and they would have an end. We would build these legacies based on the legacy of our Lord Jesus Christ who has no beginning and therefore has no end. Jesus Christ is the greatest legacy and leaves the leg greatest legacy for anyone and everyone. The, the, the teacher Solomon, the son of David, said that everything in this world, he was wise. He was wise in saying that everything in this world, beginning in his great book of Ecclesiastes, he said that everything in this world is meaningless. He has tried it all. He did everything. He tried to get rich. He went with all the women he wanted to be with. He tried to build. He tried to become so charitable. Everything that we thought we wanted in this life, power, sex, and drugs, and all sorts of things, he did all of those things. And at the end, what he was saying was, all of it was meaningless. But he goes ahead, he starts the chapter, he starts the book, and he says, everything is meaningless. But in the end of everything, in the verse, in the, in the last book of Ecclesiastes, book 12, he says, what is the conclusion of it all? Trust in the Lord our God, for this is man's all. My friends, there's no other thing for us, there's no other legacy for us to look at, but the legacy of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ, who has no beginning, has no end. And he is the only one who deserves all the glory, but he is also the one who deserves all of our focus and attention. That's how good he is. Are you guys with me so far? I'm just talking about legacy, guys. Of course, now na, now na, now na nasettle po natin yun. It is important for us, therefore, to go ahead and talk about the legacy of love that the Lord Jesus Christ has left towards each and every one of us. And take note, Kuya John, when he was, he was asking us to uh, talk about legacy, and when he was asking us to talk about legacy in all of these forms, from love to grace to honesty um, to worship and prayer and so on and so forth, he wanted to also point out that it was not just a legacy, but a living legacy. So what am I trying to submit to us today? Guys, when we look at the Lord Jesus Christ, not only are we looking at a legacy that lasts forever, but therefore, because it lasts forever, it is a living legacy. Friends, let me say that again. The Lord Jesus Christ does not just leave us with an everlasting legacy, but he leaves us with a living legacy. What does that mean? This is not just a legacy na nakasulat po in words that we can just keep on consulting back. And But the thing is, we can look at those words and have an idea of the legacy of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the Lord Jesus Christ himself is the living word and therefore is the legacy that is alive in each and every one of us. Jesus Christ himself. If it's, if it's so hard for us to understand, kung nahirapan po tayong irap sa ating mga utak, yung legacy ng Panginoon natin, let us just go to Jesus. And let us see the legacy that he leaves. And not just the legacy that he leaves, but understand 
na maski na hindi natin naintindihan, we can always trust in the fact that He will never leave us, He will never forsake us, andito lang po siya para sa atin, He is always with us and He is faithful towards us. That is the first stepping stone in understanding the legacy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Because see, we can go ahead and talk about the legacy of Brother Ibet, but he's dead already. So all we can do is just remember the memories that we have of him. We can, I dare say, we can go ahead and look at the legacy of Pastor Oscar. But here's the thing, we can only look back dito po sa dati niyang mga posts sa Facebook. Dati mga old videos niya, mga nakarecord pong video niya. Can we look at him today? Can we look at his legacy today? Sure, we can. Pero that's still based on the past. Because he's not with us anymore. But we can learn even more and more and more. New every morning. His mercies are new every morning. Because we, know, we can say that the Lord Jesus Christ refreshes us with his legacy new every morning because he is alive right here, right now. Amen? Let me go. I just needed to go ahead and point that out bago natin pag-usapan ng love. Because I feel na kailangan natin, kailangan natin, kailangan natin intindihin kung saan nanggagaling itong passion natin for the Lord Jesus Christ before we even talk about lahat ng mga pinagsasabi niya tungkol sa love. The more we realize the, the, this, the importance of the living legacy of the Lord Jesus Christ, the more we would appreciate everything He talks about, especially when it comes when, when it comes to love. Alright? Buhay pa ba kayo? Thank you. And then, uh, yeah, thank you. So let me just, uh, pag-uusapan po natin itong, if, if you tune in to the rest of our night of devotions for this coming week, you guys are gonna be talking about these verses, but um, spoiler alert, I'm gonna be talking about them right now. Well, some of them anyway. What we talk about when we talk about the love of God for us. Romans chapter 5, verses 8 to 9. But God demonstrates his, lo his own love toward us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Let me continue verses 10 and 11. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by His life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now have received reconciliation. Friends, ito po yung, ito po yung pagmamahal ng Panginoon sa atin. Wala po siyang iniisip na return. Wala po siyang iniisip na parang dahil sinabi niya sa atin na I love you, wala po siyang ini-expect na tayo rin magsabi sa kanya parang, oh, I love you too. No. It was his choice and it was his vision and it was his commitment to love us. He was not thinking about what he would get from us, but he was more thinking about what he could give to us. This is the love of God for us, that he loved us first, even before we had the idea of loving him, even before we had the idea of God in the first place. Friends, minahal na niya tayo. And not only did he say na mahal na mahal niya tayo, kundi sinabi po niya, I am willing to give you everything. And how do I know this? Again, we go back to the Lord Jesus Christ. Before natin na-realize itong gospel of grace, before natin na-realize yung pagmamahal ng Lord sa atin, because we were so busy trying to reach God, here comes Jesus Christ, and he was already dead set on his mission from the moment of his birth up to his maturing, to the moment that he actually started his ministry, he, I believe that he already had it in his mind. Na mahal na mahal ko tong mga to. I love everyone and I love all of these people. And I am willing and able not just to go ahead and give some of myself, but to give all of myself para, para goods na naman kami. Ang galing lang talaga ng Lord natin because he want, he not only did he see us, he saw us in our pathetic situation. Nakita niya tayo na parang ang dami natin mga kasalanan. Nakita, natin, nakita niya na parang wala talaga tayo mga potential or anything. He saw us. He's seeing us even right here, right now. Could you believe that he, he was thinking about all of these things hanggang ngayon, hanggang tong COVID na to. He was imagining all of these things happening to us. 
2,000 years ago, even before na napanganak po siya, he was seeing all of these things from the lens of eternity and he was saying, na, I still love these people and I will go ahead and lay down my life for these people because I love them with an everlasting love and they deserve to be part of this love. It's not good for us to be, it is not good for man to be alone. They can be with each other, but they can come together oh, through us. Ang galing talaga ni Lord, no? Yun pa lang eh. I mean, ang dami pa dito, but I only have three minutes left, so I'm just gonna finish with this. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 16. And again, in, in chapter 6, verse 3. And after that, chapter 7, verse 10. But let me go ahead and just read them one by one. This is a song... This is a song of between a husband and a wife. But we can claim this, I believe we can claim this for ourselves. Kaya nating kiligin dito about how, how much the Lord loves us that much. Ano po? Imagine God as our husband. Imagine Jesus as our husband loving all of us. This is what, this is what he says. I mean, this is, this is us talking. My beloved is mine. And I am his. He pastures his flock among the lilies. Napaka importante po sa kanya na plaman natin na I am his and he is mine. Kung bagay, kapag kunwari, pagdating po sa kasal, yan po yung mga sinasabi natin, di ba? Do you take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband in richer or for poorer through death do you part? And you would say, and the girls would say, I do. And then yung mga babae, I mean, do you take this bride, do you take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife? And richer or poorer, and all, that, all those other things, till death do you part. And then they would go ahead and say, I do. This is basically that, this is basically that as well. Because we would go ahead and say, based on this verse, that I'm willing to say that you are mine. And I'm willing to say that I am yours in everything that is happening. No matter how gruesome or no matter how, no matter how beautiful things happen. Jesus Christ has committed to you that much. Verse 6, I, chapter 6, verse 3. I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. There we go again. And then chapter 7, verse 10. I am my beloved's. And his desire is for me. If I want to leave us with anything today, guys, it's, it's this. Number one, there is no greater legacy than the legacy of our Lord Jesus Christ, who reigns forever and lives forever. And because he died for us and he rose from the dead, now we live forever through him. That's number one. That's the greatest legacy. Number two, this man with the greatest legacy loves us with the greatest love of all. And how do I know that? Again, Song of Solomon chapter 7, verse 10. He gives Himself to us. And not only does, does Jesus Christ give Himself to us, but also Jesus Christ wants us as well. His desire is for us. His desire is for you. For you guys watching here and for you guys watching online. Christ's desire, Jesus Christ's desire, the Son of God's desire is for you. He wants you. All your imperfections, all your victories, all your failures, His desire is for you. He wants you. He is excited. He is more excited than anyone else to hear about everything that you're going through. And if you may, you can spend this afternoon just talking to Him. He probably wants to listen to you. Our Lord Jesus Christ loves us with an everlasting love. Our Lord Jesus Christ loves us with a love that lasts forever. We may think, we may, baka po pwede po tayong magduda sa pagmamahal ng mga ibang tao sa atin. And that's okay. But let us never doubt the love of God towards us because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we praise you and glorify you. Thank you for loving us.
Thank you for loving us first. Thank you for loving us even now. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. Thank you for being here for us. Thank you for committing yourself to us. We want to live in that love. We want to continue to remember that love with every day. In our every dealing, we remember your love, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus Christ, for making it so. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give the Lord a clap off? Now, for all of you guys who are watching here, alam nyo na po, you guys want to give, the box is over here as usual. It's never going to leave there. Anyone who wants to go ahead and give online, we're going to be posting those links right now. If you want to go ahead and give online, that's awesome too. We appreciate it, guys. Thank you, for, thank you so much for your support in the spreading of God's word and the spreading of God's legacy in this world. And now the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon each and every one of you. The Lord lift His countenance upon you and give you His perfect and great and everlasting shalom. We know this because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a good week, everyone. We love you.